I went at the sewer and water the other night. Pam put that thing together, and for some reason, I couldn't get any. There was no uh, audio, so I had to get on the telephone, but the video was there. So I don't know what was going on. It's beyond my yeah. level of expertise in this stuff. One, one of the prompts that came up for me was either to do it either. The, I chose the Internet, and it seemed to work. So mm -hmm. the other is you dial a number, and the other, yeah. I don't know. There were three options. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, George, good to see you guys as well. All right. Have a good holiday? Uh, yeah, for the most part, I've been uh, busy on different projects, so it's been pretty crazy. Well, that's good. <laughs> it's good. Busy is good. Yeah, it is. Ah. Better than the alternative. That's for sure. Uh, I had to get a cocktail. You know, these meetings are so long. He just ate How many hours did it take you to get back from uh, the south there? Nine, with Nine four hours. stops. Oh, okay. You know, for the dogs to go pee and uh, get gas. <laughs> okay. Made did you have to be business. quite so graphic? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what the dogs do. They had a urinate. <laughs> uh, brother. So it looks like every every place is the hunting season is booming. Oh yeah. I had uh, set up my stand. I had two baby fawns come out. And of course, I don't shoot does, and I had a couple of does, and then I had three deer one morning that all I saw was their ass, their tail <laughs> flipping up, but I caught them on the camera. I had three bucks in, in, uh, in the area. So, so we're live, um, okay. just so you're, you know, I know we have a minute or two, oh. especially seven o'clock, but whenever you're ready. Okay. okay. Give it a minute. Uh, is uh, John Cooney coming in tonight? And Will? He's here. Yep, everyone's here. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. I got to call you, Will, and talk to you about the uh, water, Crystal Lake, Rugbrook Lake. So if you're around tomorrow, I'll give you a call. Okay, cool. Do we have uh, many people here signed up for the meeting, Pam? Yeah, yeah. There, there's um, there's um, quite a few for good. probably varied reasons. Yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> All right. I've got seven o'clock, so we'll call a meeting uh, December fourteenth to uh, order. And it looks like we got a full house, so we don't have to. Uh, uh, call on our alternates, which we've been doing regularly. Uh, George? Yes. Um, I think we'd need the al alternates for the uh, other uh, the permit, the special permit for, uh, what's her name there, uh, Public 2028 special permit. Oh, Cheryl, Cause, okay. Because me, Craig, and Jerry were absent. This this is we haven't opened this hearing yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is brand new. Okay, I got gotcha. you. This is brand new, so we'll yep. open it tonight. Okay. Uh, any public comment from people that signed up? Everyone okay. has. Okay. Do we have anybody? No, everyone has the ability to unmute, so you can raise your hand or you can unmute. And doesn't look like anyone is. Okay. Uh, agenda review, anything on the agenda or needs to be added? Okay. Then uh, number four is public hearing. Uh, we need a motion when I read the uh, call and then uh, Pam, if you read the, uh, the advertisement. PCC number 20-28 special permit location 522 Main Street. Applicant Cheryl McGlynn 
owner, second home LLC, proposal modification of special permit 19-05, live music and cafe lounge. Uh, two things. One is if you could read the uh, notice or three things, the notice, the uh, notifications, and and do you have anything with regards to confirmation of the uh, posting of the signs? Okay. Um, let me start off with the legal ad. Uh, it was um, notices here by given that the Winchester Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, December 14th, 2020 at 7 p.m. via the online platform Zoom for the following applications. One, PZC 2028 special permit, applicant Cheryl McGlynn, owner, second home LLC, 522 Main Street, map 110, block 053, lot 010, proposal, modification of special permit 1905, live music and cafe lounge. Meetings are live streamed on YouTube at the following and it provides the address. Parties interested in participating during the meeting should email pcolumbia at townofwinchester.org ahead of the meeting. Questions and or comments may be emailed to that address. At this hearing, interested persons may appear and be heard and written communications will be received. Copies of the above application are on file for public inspection in the Planning and Community Development Office dated at Winchester, Connecticut this 24th day of November 2020. George Klassen, Chairman, it was published in the Republican American on November 25th, 2020 and December 7th, 2020. Um, with regards to the notices to the abutting property owners, I did receive the certificate of mail providing evidence that it was sent. Um, I happened to see the sign when I was walking by, but maybe um, Sean and or Cheryl can confirm that the sign was um, posted for the... Yes, I, I would say okay. the day after you gave me the sign, which was probably three weeks ago at least, I put it in the window. It's been there since it's still there. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Why don't we, uh, if uh, you both or one or the other, or present what you're uh, planning to do and what the application is about, please. So we would like to be able to have at the most one or two performing musicians um, in the lounge on occasion uh, where the volume would be appropriate for the small space, not um, imposing on our tenants right upstairs, on our neighbors left and right, um, just the ability to have live <clears throat> music versus just a, a radio playing or something like that on occasion. Some, something similar, I would say, to what um, I've seen at the... Um, uh, Red Barn Brewery, you know, they seem to do something very similar where it's just one or two folks that'll come, you know, acoustic guitar, maybe an electric guitar with a, you know, with a small amplifier. Um, just wanting to be able to throw different things in the mix. Yeah, the, the place is small, so it wouldn't accommodate more than one or two people. I mean, its occupancy is 45 people, you know, anyhow. So it's not like we're going to have a rave or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so... And we can, if I don't, I think you have the plan. We could pop the plan up if you want to um, show you the location within the facility that we're looking at doing it. Um, or, you know, you know, if you want to share the screen. Can you pull that up, Pam? Do you have that? Well, we can share the screen. We have it available, or Pam has it, whatever works. I'm not sure if you have it ready. I, I can make it, and then that way you can use okay. the cursor to show yeah. where you're going to put people. How, how much square footage in there, Cheryl, that uh, your the area that you'll be. Well, using? the. the, the, the you're talking about the whole space or just where we would have the where, music? Where, well, where your 45 people are going to sit. I'm okay. Sure. Um, Pam, you need to authorize me to share screen. I did. You just oh, oh, there, there it go. goes. Okay. All right, hold on. So here. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see here, so this is the place. Now this is uh, making it look like it's really more tables and chairs when we're actually going to be doing more of um couches and comfortable chairs. So we're thinking in terms of if we're gonna have entertainment. So this is the bar area. This is a little raised area. These are the two bathrooms. So if we're gonna have entertainment, it either is gonna be up here or in either this area. Most likely up here on the raised area because it makes the most sense. Um, but it's, if we just have one acoustic person, they may go into one of these spots. 
If it's two, they would have to go here. It is a small space. Um, and that's all we're really looking at. Just to give us the option and our, our customers that type of option to enjoy, you know, a little acoustic, mainly acoustic music, a little amplified acoustic music, but not anything significant. Any question? Uh, in your app, just, just before we get to the rest of the uh, commissioners, uh, in your application and the uh, uh, paragraph describing it, you said you were going to uh, do sound insulation. Has that already been done? No, because the place right now, we're still waiting for the electrician. So until we, so right now, it's all the walls and the ceiling are opened up. So ultimately, um, the goal is we're doing a double layer of, of insulation within the walls of the building itself just for you know it's, it's the um what, what is that stuff roxel the roxel mm -hmm. stuff so that which provides some you know sound insulation but they also roxel also has a soundproof and insulation which we're going to put in the ceilings for our tenants okay has that been uh, has that gone through the building department for a re review yes. as far as, okay yes. yes that's one of the questions after what happened in rhode island of course this doesn't sound like it's a concert venue it's no 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 scenario no. And the rock soul is also fire retardant, so it's not right. a. All right. That's not an issue. Okay. Um, okay, so that and you you've got hours on here that you presented uh, the anticipated hours Tuesday through Thursday two p.m. to ten, Friday and Saturday two p.m. to eleven, and Sunday two p.m. to nine. Is that uh, yes? What yeah. you're intending? Okay. Yes. All right, um, Pam. Do we have uh, so you, you? That's your presentation is complete. Far yes. Okay. It's, a, it's simple. Unless you have questions. Okay. All right, uh, Pam. Do we have uh, input from uh, town staff? Just, just, just for the record, that was Sean McGlynn and Cheryl. Um, let me pull it mm -hmm. up. I have comments from. I, I don't have comments from. Um, Jim Rollins, but I do have comments from the fire marshal. You're, you're getting a reverberation, Pam. Yeah. She froze. Playing the piano. Let me pull those up first. Sorry. Are you pulling something up on the screen, Pam? I am. Okay, all right. Um, that there's the fire marshal's comments. Uh, okay, so he, he commented about the uh, soundproofing. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's all going through yeah. building permit stages. All right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and then uh, Chief Fitzgerald had no um, comments. Um, I mean, he, he provided a statement saying so. Yeah, um, give me one moment and I will so. pull that up. No. Who is this person that you're talking about, Pam? Chief Fitzgerald. Please, Chief. Please, Chief. Oh, please, Chief. Thank Someone's you. looking to come into the meeting. <laughs> uh, There. And that's all, that's all I have for staff. That's all you have? All right. Yes. Okay, why don't we uh, open it up to, uh, you had some people signed up for uh, to participate in the public hearing. Why don't we open it? You know, uh, I backtrack. Uh, we didn't get a motion to open the public hearing, so yeah. my apology. I'll make such a motion. All right. Second. Second it. Okay, second it. All in favor? Just raise Aye. your hand. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Sorry, folks. This has been recorded, so we'll we'll hopefully we don't get slapped about it. But um, what we have public that are uh, interested yeah, I think in. Are good. Um, as before, anyone who's uh, looking to comment on the application has the ability to unmute themselves or raise your hand. Give me some indication if you need a prompt. 
I don't think so. No, I think you're, I don't think. We have no one from the public? Nope. All right. Um, we did receive, uh, this is uh, came through uh, an email with regards to the application from a uh, neighbor on uh, High Street, and it's a Bo Black. So if the, everybody would just bear with me. Uh, there's a, and I think uh, the applicants may be aware because I think this is part of the discussion of uh, what was left behind the building before you folks uh, purchased it or when you're in the process of doing it. But there has also been a number of issues with regards to uh, uh, loud music and so forth from tenants and not just, but in that vicinity, I know up from uh, ABC Pizza or, or Kent Pizza, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just read it. Um, <clears throat> uh, we just want you, you and the board to know that this property has represented with regards to noise, has, been, has represented with regards to noise and nuisance and waste of resource time police for many years. Granted, this is a relatively new owner of the building, but the tenants are the same, and there have been calls to the police since after she took possession also. Live music and music in general is something we were assured would not be a part of this wine cafe when we were informed of this being built out. This property would be considered a problem property in an and area by any police department. And as I mentioned, although every police officer on the force who have been on the force for a while has responded to complaints here at one time or another, and even Chief Fitzgerald has visited the building and area. The problems with this address and area precede Chief Fitzgerald by a decade. There are hundreds of complaint calls, many warnings and citations to tenants of this property. Live music is not what this residential neighborhood behind them wants. This building and area has been extremely detrimental to the quality of life, respect, and consideration for peaceful enjoyment, which is strongly put forth in the town's noise ordinance, section 195, uh, noise regulation, section five, residential activities, which begin with lawnmowers, chainsaws, tractors, et cetera, and then specifically addresses uh, no person shall use, play, or operate radio, phonograph, tape player, musical instruments, compact disc player, loudspeaker, or other sound amplifying device at any volume which shall disturb the occupants and adjacent residences or units at any time. The ordinance in section six goes on to speak to enforcement, which the police have responded to every single time and in a timely manner, and shut it down, giving warnings and cited. Even with all that, the problem has persisted. This problem should not be added to when we can't even remedy the existing problem going on for years. Uh, by the way, this area is directly adjacent to 30 High Street, now owned by the city, which Geiger had demolished and because it had been such a nuisance and blight property. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, so that's uh, Bo Black, who lives up on High Street. I know there's been a number of things. I don't know if, what the situation is from there, but uh, <clears throat> any other comments from High Street? He seems to be the only one that's bringing that up. <clears throat> uh, let's, uh, if we don't have anything from the public, could we open it up to the commissioners and go around the, the uh, table, if we would, please? Art. I'm fine with uh, what has been presented. And uh, I think in the past, it was a different situation compared to the new owners. I would concur with that uh, wholeheartedly. I, I, I think it's a, a uh, improvement to what's happened on Main Street. And I really don't think it's gonna be a detriment to the area. Uh, Peter? Pete on board? He's there. One okay. second, he's going to unmute. Okay. <clears throat> yep, uh, I have no comment. Uh, it looks fine to me. Okay. Uh, Jerry? 
I would say just as long as the sound deafening uh, material meets the town ordinances, you know, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any uh, additional comments from the commission or anybody that might have just come in on the uh, from the public? All right, if we don't need any additional information, then uh, we'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, I make a motion. Oh, I'll second it. Okay, did you get that, Pam? Yeah, that was our, and then Craig seconded it. Okay. Uh, any comments on the motion? All in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay, the uh, public okay. hearing has, has closed. And we'll move on to uh, number five, which is old business, PZC number 20-28, special permit location, 522 Main Street, applicant Cheryl McGlynn, owner, second home LLC, proposal modification of special permit 19 Dash zero five live music in a cafe lounge. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, there's a few things. Uh, we had a, a printed uh, draft motion. I just, if, uh, Art, do you have a copy of that? No, I don't. Okay. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Okay. I'll read it. All right. Approve application 20-28 special permit applicant Cheryl McGlynn, owner, second home LLC, location 522 Main Street, proposal modification of special permit 19-05, live music and cafe lounge. One, in evaluating the application, the Planning and Zoning Commission has relied upon information provided by the applicant and if any such information subsequently proves to be false, deceptive, incomplete, and or inaccurate, this permit shall be modified, suspended, or revoked. Two, the application is consistent with the town's plan of conservation and development. Three, this application meets the criteria and standards of 3J common regulation, special permit, slant, special exceptions. Just uh, thinking about this and what they've had uh, quite a few problems in the area that I was aware of before I even saw Bo Black's uh, letter. I, I would, uh, just for comment, uh, I've been involved with some applications in different towns. This one I'm speaking of is in West Hartford. And the people that we represented and uh, we were involved with the project, uh, it was uh, automotive use. And there's always a history, it seems, of the uh, the old days of having uh, junk vehicles outside, engines, parts. And so what the, uh, the uh, West Hartford Planning and Zoning Commission did is gave us approval of the site plan and special permit for our application, but they limited it to a uh, one-year uh, uh, approval subject to uh, in annual review to make sure that in fact, the uh, applicant was complying with what they advertised they would do. And uh, so I would just suggest uh, that for consideration of the commission that we add uh, one year uh, compliance on this uh, for an annual review uh, without further uh, permit uh, cost, but just to confirm that this has in fact been complied with, with the sound and managing, uh, the, you know, what they provided here in the information session. That's going to be added in. I so approve. I would, I would like to add that in, but it's up to yeah. you. You made the motion. I'll make that as a motion. Yeah. The, the only can I make a comment? Sure. I, the only thing I see is in listening to the applicants, they're still in the throes of uh, developing this, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound like it's anything that's imminently. Uh, in a position to open. And I think if we're gonna put such a restriction on it that it should be uh, timed to when they actually open rather than if they hit some delays mm -hmm. and, and are gonna be, uh, you know, they, don't, they only have six months. I think that would be uh, less than uh, <clears throat> appropriate. Yeah, but I, 
I think that's a legitimate. Uh, I think you ought to do it to when they get. I, I I guess they have an occupancy now, but when they officially open, it becomes they notify Pam, and that becomes our start date. I put in there a one-year review from date of opening. Yep, that sounds good. Uh, but I would I would like to see so we don't have another special permit application and. Uh, this is a is basically looking for compliance in the uh, terms of the agreement, if that's a f acceptable. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other uh, the other thing we typically would do is put an effective date. So and then this uh, special permit would have to be recorded in the land record. So uh, I'll, you've got to advertise this, Pam. So when what would be a legitimate date? Uh. Thursday, uh, Wednesday of uh, the 16th. The 16th. Okay. Yes. So we should add the effective date of the approval would be uh, December 16th. Um. And, and I would say uh, that the uh, narrative that was with the application should be filed with the, uh, with the approval. Is that acceptable to everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right. So, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay. It's been approved with those uh, stipulations. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Good, and good luck there. Thank, Thank you. you. Already uh, nice improvements to Main Street. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We're trying. Have a good night. Have a good night, all. You too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you need any time there, PM, to write anything down, or you got it all set? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Number six is uh, <clears throat> new business, PZC number 20 29, zoning regulation change, uh, location 149 Newfield Road, applicant owner, East Coast Assistant Dogs, uh, ECAD. <clears throat> Proposal zoning text amendment to provide bonus of 5% impervious surface coverage when LID tech techniques are employed in the rural residential area. Uh, now this requires a, uh, a special permit uh, uh, public hearing and the uh, regulations, uh, the state legislature requires us to have a minimum of 35 days uh, between uh, special permit will become, uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. Get the wording here. Okay, such referrals must be made to to the commission thirty five days. So that's we've got a public hearing. You got to have thirty five day notice. So you've got to inform the cog. You've got to inform our uh, joining towns, and then we'll pump. So the public hearing probably, by the looks of what we've got going on with Christmas and so forth, would look like what the second meeting in uh, January. Yep, January twenty fifth. Okay. So could we have a motion from the commission to establish that as a uh, public hearing? Uh, oh. Okay, Peter, and who seconded? I'll second it. Craig seconded. Any comments? So just for the record, um, and for anyone who might uh, be here, it would be January 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Okay. Any, uh, any other comments from the commission? All in favor? Just raise your hand. Thank you. <clears throat> 6B, uh, PZC number 20-30, a special permit location, 149 Newfield Road, applicant owner, East Coast Assistant Dogs, uh, ECAD, uh, proposal special mm -hmm. permit for phase three of training kennel, kennel and modify the approved site plan. Uh, likewise, this has to have a, a public hearing and it's got to be advertised. Uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, thought on the commission? You want to set it up for the first uh, week, the first meeting I, in January, or do you want to do it at the same time, the second meeting in January? I think the applicants engineer uh, it was expecting them both to be uh, the public hearing to begin on January twenty fifth at seven p.m. via Zoom okay. um, on both applications. If 
I'll, you know, if it's I'll not the same to you. Have them January 25th. It'd be easier for everybody to have them together, I believe. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And who seconded that? I did. Art did. Okay. Any further comments on the motion? All in favor? Thank you. Okay. The uh, next item is our uh, approval of minutes for November 23rd, 2020. <clears throat> Can I have a motion with regards to... Uh, I'll, I'll make that motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, I'll second it, but I have to abstain. I was yeah, there. No, that's fine. Yeah, because we had... Uh, John Cooney and uh, and Will Platt were seated that night. Uh, Correct. So uh, I don't see any changes that need to be made that I can see. Uh, I didn't see any. They looked fine. Okay. All in favor? Okay. So we've got a few abstentions. Uh, Jerry abstain. and Craig. And uh, Art. Did, John, did John check in? Did John Cooney yes. check in? Okay, yep. I didn't. Yep. Yeah, here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay, John, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, so that's uh, taken care of. Hey, George, uh, just before you discuss your other business, I I don't know if you if the commission would be inclined to take um, new business, um, informal, uh, preliminary pre-development conversation um, ahead of the commission's other business just because I see the oh, engineer we, yeah. and his no, that's, attorney. That's not a, I yeah, don't they're, have a, they're all on. Okay. That okay with the commission? Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, take it out of order. We'll take uh, item uh, 10 uh, other business uh, a pre-development discussion with Dunkin Donuts regarding uh, 8, 28 and 38 South Main Street. So who's here representing that? So attorney Tim Fury, even though it says William Tracy, it's my <coughs> partner's Zoom account. So uh, attorney Tim Fury from Bristol, uh, representing uh, Joseph uh, Naples, the uh, Dunkin' Donut uh, franchisee in your community. Um, we're of course uh, working with Robert Colabella from uh, Laurel Engineering, who's also on the call and is gonna put some things up for you to review. Uh, Joe, uh, working with your previous town manager uh, and your uh, staff, and most importantly with Mr. Colabella, um, began working to acquire some of the properties uh, climbing up the hillside on South Main Street, the old restaurant, and a couple of the uh, multifamily houses uh, with the goal of developing a um, drive-up only uh, a Dunkin' Donut facility uh, to replace the one that he currently has uh, next door, but with a more modern uh, footprint. The uh, property uh, that uh, the properties that we've uh, got under option, um, and I'm sure you're all very familiar with them, have all their own challenges. The, uh, the restaurant was an old gas station, has you know foot and a half thick walls, uh, and the houses uh, are older. Uh, to say the uh, the least, um, I believe the towns had some desire for a while to slowly uh, eliminate those non-conforming uh, houses. So, uh, working with Mr. Colabella, we develop we've been developing uh, some potential site plans uh, for the property. Uh, we have the challenge of the uh, older existing structure, st the structures two of which would be removed, one of which would be reduced in size. Uh, we have the uh, challenges of the nature of the building with its foot thick walls. And we have challenges of the, of the site, which is located in part within a flood zone uh, near uh, sensitive uh, wetlands on the still uh, uh, river. So uh, Mr. Colabella has made some recommendations uh, to us in terms of the design. Uh, the uh, He's going to... Uh, if permitted, Pam, to share a screen uh, with you. Uh, Let me know when you're ready, Pam. You've got it. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm waiting for that to go away. And that would be this one. Okay. So uh, the design that is uh, you're looking at now is a two curb cut design 
uh, it would uh, permit uh, us to bring in full size uh, tractor trailers uh, onto the site, which uh, we don't really do now. Uh, but it does, but it does require us to have uh, uh, one very large uh, curb cut, uh, which would probably need relief from your regulations, and it requires us to. Uh, impede, if you will, or get uh, deeper into the uh, the grades and the floodplain uh, on the site. It makes it very difficult mm -hmm. for us to uh, comply uh, with the flood storage uh, requirements of the uh, of the of the zoning uh, or of the Inland Wetlands uh, Commission and your floodplain uh, ordinance. Um, the Second drawing, uh, which is what Mr. Cabela is recommending to us, um, is of a, a single uh, access curb cut. And you'll have to go down to that one, Mr. Cabela. Uh, it's, it's on screen. Okay, it's not what I'm seeing, though. Yeah, yeah, oh, it is? Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a single, I'm sorry it is. There's a single curb cut. Uh, with this design, uh, we can access the site with all uh, trucks that uh, that attend attend to the facility on a daily <laughs> basis. All the box size top trucks. We can fully uh, retain all of uh, uh, water now or in the future uh, for floodplain and drainage uh, purposes. Uh, we can um, provide much better green space. Uh, and design uh, along our frontage uh, for the attractiveness of the site and uh, you know properly landscape retain appropriate sight lines from the one driveway and only have one curb cut. Currently, I believe there's five curb cuts on the site, including the homes. We'd be reducing it to one with this uh, site. One uh, issue that we need to discuss is if we go with this, which we think is a, a much more desirable design, uh, there is one uh, tractor trailer size a vehicle that attends our current location on a weekly basis, once a week between 9.30 and 11 at night, uh, which is something we've arranged because we don't want impact on our customers or on our, or the traffic of the area. And that one delivery would have to occur uh, on the uh, the side of the road where there is a large uh, there is parking there now and it occurs uh, now um, and uh, there is room to have the trailer come off uh, uh, the roadway completely off the travel lane and make its delivery at the non-peak hours at night um, and then move on. Currently, our uh, our existing site, which was previously approved before we owned it by the commission, um, receives deliveries that way. And we're told that the truck sometimes uh, backs into the site uh, if it's slow enough on the, on the highway. Um, but we will need to go to the DOT uh, for our encroachment permit. And before we did a design, we wanted to get some feedback from the commission. We think this is a superior design. Uh, again, the, the trucks that are on a daily basis can, can come into the site. Uh, 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 it's only the one once a week delivery, which we control and we control the timing of it as well. Uh, the second issue we have with both uh, designs uh, is according to your regulation, and the building may actually shrink in size because we don't need 1,265 square feet. Um, you have one parking space per 100 square feet, um, but that was contemplating a sit-down restaurant. This would be a drive-up only, so we would. Uh, so the number of spaces we're showing there, being the six, is more than enough for. Uh, you know, our employees and our, our management stuff, most of our employees don't have cars. And Duncan now has experience with this uh, format throughout the country. Um, and it just doesn't need to be over parked and providing pavement that you don't uh, need. Uh, so we'd either be uh, discussing amending your regulations to provide for this different type of use or looking to the Zoning Board of Appeals because it is a unique property with some unique uh, pressures. 
Um, but we, uh, you know, believe working with Mr. G Cobello, who's been our lead, uh, Cobello has been our lead designer. We can provide a product that, you know, would, uh, you know, meet your goals, give you a viable, uh, productive site uh, where there hasn't been any in many years. <clears throat> so we're, informally, we're looking for some input. Uh, Mr. Uh, Colabella can talk to you a little bit about the uh, uh, the design uh, limitations of the site that led him to this recommendation. You could, Bob? Yes, I'm good. Okay, for the record, Robert Colabella, Principal Engineer of Laurel Engineering. Um, as Tim put it so well, but I will show you in engineering terms kind of what we're looking at. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner here, this is a single curb cut with full floodplain mitigation. Uh, by, by me saying that, I mean this heavy line right here is, this heavy line right here is the approximate, well, it is the, we had it surveyed. This is the 100 year flood zone elevation. So the volume that we need to mitigate right now with the single curb cut design includes this area right here and then this area right here. To mitigate that, we're going to do a combination, both area to retain our stormwater and take out enough volume down here to mitigate the volume that we needed here. And we can get, with this single curb cut design, we can get 100% because we do not have to have a double curb cut just so a tractor trailer can be in the, in the you know, westbound lane uh, and have to come in here, like, well, let's just show you the second plan would be easier. All right, so here's this, the plan that shows the double curb cut. So what has to happen in order to get this vehicle, you hear these red and green lines are the turning template lines for this, for this size vehicle. So we'd have to come in on this and come around and we had to push this area over here out uh, towards the, the retention area to get the, the turning template to work for, for this size vehicle. Now in doing so, what ends up happening is, once again, here we are at the, at the heavy line, but now the volume that we have to mitigate entails this entire area here. And even with me enlarging the retention basin and rerouting the stormwater to two different locations, where in the other design it was coming in at one location at the top side and going out the bottom side. Um, and we have this pipe, this outgoing pipe set. Uh, these are all one foot contours, by the way. So we have this out foot outlet pipe here, uh, three feet above the bottom. Don't, and it, it, it actually is able to to take care of both 100% of the water quality uh, stormwater runoff. And it, it also uh, is able to, in the, other, in the other one, it's able to give us 100% of the volume without having to cross into this right of way area that comes down here and accesses across the back. So these properties are on both sides of that right of way, all of them are. Right. And, and in order to get, and in this one, as you come, as I come up here to the corner and you'll see, well, I better make that smaller. All right, so the double, oh, I'm trying to get it out of the, oh, I'm underneath everybody. I'm gonna move you over here. All right, so the double curb cut uh, will only get us, even with this amount of volume, 75% of the floodplain mitigation volume that we need to achieve, unless I cross, over the right of way, which is probably something that we don't really want to do with this. And it also pushes us even closer to the river. So it, by going with the double curb cut, it increases the wetland regulated activity by about 25% in area, and it increases the wetland regulated activity volumes by about 33%. Um, when I say a special approval, and it says by the town zoning commission, actually when you need a, a special approval for an, the driveway ordinance, you actually have to go through the Board of Selectmen, but, and the only reason we say that is because uh, our driveway ordinance requires that you have a, min a maximum 30 feet width at the property line. Well, in order to get that tractor trailer in here, we could never maintain that 30 foot width and make, and he have him make the corner. So that's what we're talking about kind of when we say we need 
uh, we're going to need some kind of um, relief from that part of the ordinance. Uh, and then speaking to the the on street loading and the parking, um, you know, uh, Tim put it uh, really well. I mean, this is a different type of facility compared to the two the other two Dunkin' Donuts that Joe has in town. Uh, the other two are, you know, obviously you get out of your car, you park, you go inside, you sit down, you have something to eat, maybe uh, have some coffee and leave. But in this instance, there are there is no getting out of your car. So basically, the only people that are parking here are the employees, uh, which includes a handicap stall. And it's five stalls total, by the way, um, uh, four regular parking stalls and one handicap stall. So by trying to go with a du double curb cut, what ends up happening is we really can't get the entire 100% volume of mitigation that we need and probably have to go seek a LOMA from the DEEP, which would put us out at least a year or so. It also increases our regulated activity and it also in area and it also increases our regulated activity in volume. There are no, there aren't any, no parking signs along this area in front of the building. It's a 10 foot wide shoulder, enough to get, enough width to get the, the trailer off the road. Uh, currently, and I think Tim mentioned this, you know, I've gone by Dunkin' Donuts before, and it isn't just the Dunkin' Donuts truck we're talking about that parks on the bridge and goes in and grabs a coffee. I've seen a Dewey Pile truck there. You know, I've seen other um, tractor trailer guys, you know, parking, going in, getting their morning coffee, and there those trucks are just sitting on the bridge. And the, at the bridge, actually, the shoulder there is significantly smaller. It goes down to like eight, six feet. By the time you're at McDonald's, it's down to two feet. But over here in this area, it's 10 feet wide. So uh, to that end, we thought we'd come in informally. And the reason we're coming in informally is because of the DOT encroachment permit. We have a transportation engineer who's working with us on this project. His name is Scott Heskett, and he's going to be uh, dealing with the Department of Transportation. And in our pre-planning uh, meetings, uh, Scott had mentioned, look, you know, the, the one of the first questions that the DOT is going to ask us is, is the town okay with, you know, because the reason, the whole reason between this double, double curb cut and single curb cut is A, getting that tractor trailer through the property or, and we, we'd have to go with this or B, allowing him to park in a parking area uh, off the, off in the shoulder uh, between 9.30 and 11.30 at night once a week. Um, and he isn't going to be there for the two hours. I mean, he's going to pull up. He's going to grab his stuff off the truck. He's going to bring it inside. He's going to get back in the truck. He's going to leave. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what the time frame is that he would be parked out there. Mm, yeah, 10 minutes, maybe uh, 15 tops. Uh, I'm thinking. It's but, a half hour tops. All right, there we go. Sorry. So, and, and in order to, you know, I'll get before the DOT, we know that Scott Haskett has been before them so many times. He knows that he's going to say, hey, look, you know, we'd like to know that the town would be on board with you parking out in front. So going back to our single curb cut design. You, now, if I just scroll back and forth real quick, you can actually see the difference in volume here of the amount of work that's happening. So look how far out it, 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 put, it takes it from here and pushes it way out here and, yeah. and even then we can't get what we need to get. So um, really we would love to attack this with the DOT and you know the town. We know that we have a couple of other hurdles when it comes to parking because right now th there isn't quite this, this situation you know, where nobody's really going inside. So uh, either we beat the variance or um, we yeah. go for some kind of a change. Uh, which, which in either case, we we would go for because uh, either of those, because with especially with ZBA, the variance issue, um, I mean, we truly would be in a situation where, and very, it's very rare that you get to say that you actually have a hardship, you know, but actually doing the double curb cut and doing everything else puts us so deep into that floodplain that it, it, it really causes a, a difference in flood elevation. And as all of you know, right across the street from this river, 
you know, we, we, we have the Walker field back there and other fields. And I don't know if you remember the 70 year storm we had a little while ago where the entire field was underwater. So that being said, we don't want to raise the elevation anymore than it already is. And uh, this would be the best way to attack it. So I think that pretty much sums up the, the rationalizations between, you know, why, why we're going this route. So, so just in summary, uh, the condition that we're trying to uh, deal with here exists now. So if the property were repurposed as it exists, I don't think you're going to have a different scenario. Just if someone went in and reopened it as a restaurant, they probably wouldn't have to come before you. Uh, but they're still going to have the same uh, situation. Um, and currently, there's no water quality measures on any of the three properties. And water quality measures we'd be implementing would be an upgrade. Uh, the floodplain mitigation is a mitigation that's just bringing up the current uh, standards, uh, probably making the situation uh, better. Um, and certainly, we're going to uh, improve your gateway. Uh, which I, I'm sure all of you understand the improvement Joe made to your gateway on the other on the other side of Main Street on the north end of Main Street when we got rid of that junky old gas station and uh, built what's there uh, now, and we'd love the opportunity to try to do that uh, to do that here. Um, Question, Rob. Yes. If he's uh, going to park on the street. Yes. How is he going to un? Are you going to put a ramp or something for him to? Uh, unload and go on to, or is he going to have to walk all the way down to the curb cut and then into the building to unload? Joe, does he unload from the back or the side? He can unload from either, um, so, but so usually, he, it's usually the side. And depending on the input we get from the commission, we can, you know, design something for the hand cart to traverse over to the to the building. Well, if he if he's if he's coming in from the side, you know, we're gonna have to replace the sidewalk that's out there completely in its entirety because the DOT would re is going to require that. So he'll have the truck, the truck will be right on, on the, the concrete. There's a ramp here. He can make his way around here if he'd like, or we can put a little walk across here where he can just go in. Um, I think myself, Rob, I think, yep a cut of some type for him to be able to get in there would be a lot better than having to go all the way around because because all the way around he's might be out in the roadway well no that's that's an easy thing to do and it also uh, a lot of our employees are on foot so they can access the public uh walkway that way i agree uh, right here are you know right now this is yeah. just shown as nice all green grass. Here's the concrete walk that we're going to be replacing yeah. right along here. So if he unloads here, and we're going to keep the sign right where it is. So right. you know, if we put a little walk across here in front of the sign or behind the sign, he can, you know, he might pull up a little further. Who knows, you know, where exactly? Right. Just I just showed it here. I mean, he could be end up over here a little bit, but at least if he sees the 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 crosswalk, he'll pull up to that. Uh, that, that's what I, I, I would try to put that crosswalk in a spot where it, it doesn't hinder. Well, you, you know, we would put the, we would put the crosswalk in a place where Scott Hesketh, who's our traffic design engineer, would tell us for sightline purposes, it's the best location. Right. That's and what then, I'm that, thinking. And then the truck would be there. But Scott's, uh, you know, and his father before him is one of the top traffic uh, engineers in the state. And he's been looking at the sight lines very carefully here, working with Mr. Colabella, and uh, uh, we would design it with that in mind. And we uh, preemptively, uh, you know, uh, there, there's there been some preemptive shrubbery removal on properties that he's already leasing right now and, you know, has had the ability to do. So the actual sight line being like 10 feet off the road is starts like right here where I, I, I am and and yeah. it literally comes through here. You never, no matter where you really put this truck, it's, you know, the further back this way you go, there's a chance the corner of the truck might be there. But from about this contour forward all the way up, 
you know, there isn't an issue with, with sight distance of him being here. You'd be looking by the truck the entire time because, yeah. of, the, because of the curvature in the road. Yeah, right. The road just curves around here. So that sight line can, you know, comes right, right through, right through where we were hoping to, you know, we were thought about trying to get a little extra parking here, but we, you know, we really can't stack the cars here because we really need that distance to, to see the people, you know, over here in the lane about this area. Uh, to get the required sight distance. Uh, fortunately, another thing that happens here is that the the distance between the double yellow line from here from here to the double yellow line, it, you know, it it's still narrowing as you're coming by this area till it gets to its narrowest point, which is somewhere o o over here. Right. So, so by him being off the road in this area, you know, cars will easily be able to go by him without having to cross or come near the WL line. Okay. So does that answer your question, Art? Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I tend to go with the single curb cut and meet the floodplain. I, I don't know how the other members think. So we're looking some for some input on the overall design, of course, a single curb cut and on the reduction of the parking requirements given it's a drive up only. So it's only for the employees. Uh, on the site, because uh, that's nothing that's really ever been addressed in your regulations uh, right. uh, before. Well, we've never had an application where we've had a, a just a strictly a drive-through. No, I, mean. I understand. I understand. Yeah, absolutely. But, but the other, uh, what kind of staging would you have here? What's the maximum number of cars with a single curb cut? Could you get on site? Well, we got the whole. We have the DOT's uh, two hundred and eighty foot rule, which is uh, 14, fourteen stalls of twenty. Uh, at 20 feet, but this one currently, and I have the number right here, hold on. This, this drive queue currently has 298 lineal feet, which is 18 feet longer than the DOT requires. Well, the experience with, uh, with the existing location, you get tractor trailers that are not associated with the business that parks along by that bridge, which is narrow, and you've got strong terrace, uh, you know, coming out into that point. So and Whiting Street, so it's kind of a congested little area there, and you've got the curvature of 44. So it's it's not a it's not an easy area right now to deal with it. So uh, and even even with the existing location, it's got right turn out only, and even some of our own town officials don't honor that. They take a left coming out of there. Yeah, almost everybody takes that. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, you know, the reason for that. Uh, no left turn there is obviously the proximity of the egress to McDonald's. Now you'd have somebody taking a right out of McDonald's at the same time, somebody taking a left out of the old Duncan or well, the Duncan on the other side of the river. And, you know, they go head to head, you know, it, it's just somebody's trying to, they say, Oh, I got a spot. And he tries to get out the same time the Duncan guy's taking a left. That's the reason the DOT did that there, if I'm not mistaken. And then one of the other things that we have going for us a little bit with the tractor trailer being parked on the road is the time that it's going to be there between 9 30 and 11 30 at night so right so you know which would minimize at least the volume uh, right. of traffic in the area and you know uh, also we can make sure that that crosswalk that we were all discussing here mm -hmm. earlier you know puts it to where we put the vehicle in a spot where it's not hindering the ingress and egress to a uh, strong terrace you know so we can move it up a lot closer up here towards the parking area and the doors over here anyway you know right. on this side of the building so moving this tractor trailer up further the, see even though the road width gets narrower the the actual shoulder gets to re remain at the 10 feet all the way through here you know so as we know in the past you know we're he's taking here's the first house where i think that the lawyer is or so was it the tailor before and now it's the lawyer here's the second house it's where we're coming in kind of you know somewhat closer to the second house. You know, we know that, you know, when they have visitors and whatnot, they only have enough parking for like one or two cars, other than this first house, only have parking for one or two cars and they're parked out on the street. Today, I actually saw someone at this one parked forward and there was somebody, you know, just visiting, dropping off something and they had pulled in from this side and were sitting with the tail end of their car in the shoulder while the face of their car was sitting here and they just, I don't know what was going on there, but on a, you know, we're, we're at the process and I know that the homeowners in that area are in the process of all trying to sell to, 
Yeah, some commercial entities especially would help us spruce up the town gateway, which is the whole reason for that zone being created in the first place. Well, the good part about it is you're talking about a dedicated uh, tractor trailer coming in that you can control the delivery time because on Main Street, obviously we've got uh, you know uh, two lanes in each each direction, and we've got tractor trailers making deliveries to uh, restaurants and uh, the uh, health food store and so forth, and they're coming at any hour of the day. And uh, thank God we've got the business to be able to attract them, and there's yeah. the maneuver. Uh, so it's a matter of ironing it out with the state. Uh, right. it looks looks to me like the single curb cut would be uh, would, would be less uh, of a problem at that. You get just less <coughs> entry and exit. Uh, you know, two different locations. I agree. Yeah, it's the reason I started with this one. This was my primary design, but after Scott brought up the issues with loading and unloading and parking. Uh, I want and the, and especially with the DOT because he knows what it's like to go through this process with them. Uh, fortunately, one of the things we have going for us when we walk into the DOT is that you know the old Primo restaurant had two curb cuts, and then we have a curb cut for this one, and we have a curb cut for this house. Well, you know, get four curb cuts and reducing it down to one that might help us a bit uh, with the process. You know, putting two yep. curb cuts. And the other thing, you're moving your curb cuts away from the Whiting Street intersection also. Correct. And, and not only that, especially, well, that doesn't mean that the, I don't know what would happen to the old building over there, you know, but that curb cut will still be there, but it's on the other side of the bridge. So once you're on this side of the bridge, you know, these curb cuts really don't interfere with each other. Right. I don't know. From my standpoint, I think the single curb cut is probably a better one. There's not... There's not going to be, uh, you know, 100% that everybody's going to be happy with everything, but it's going to be an opportunity to uh, clean up an area that uh, has obviously been not pro not occupied too well. And then uh, the housing uh, would be good to get that, uh, you know, changed into more what it's really intended to be as a commercial district. Correct. And, you know, so the we're about to have a... Uh you know, uh, Bob do a whole bunch of engineering and design work together with our traffic engineers. So if other people have their thoughts, it's great to get them now. <clears throat> I'm not the guy who's going to spend my holiday weeks. Uh, <laughs> doing design work. It's got to be changed. Well, I know I'll be that <laughs> guy. So. There it is, so. But, you know, this single curb cut also, the outfall for the detention area actually stays on this side of the right of way. And, you know, really for the water to get, to the, to the two to three foot level here that it needs to get. I mean, this basin would have to fill up quite a bit with water before it even starts to go out and into this area. Otherwise it's just gonna, you know, go into the ground. Uh, the cut itself, the bottom is at like 690, that's uh, 99, that's 98 and 97. The river is at like 96.5. So we're even with the cut, we're still four and a half feet above the level of the river. So I don't think we'll be introducing any groundwater to our, our volume out here. So, uh, and being able to only have to, to mitigate the volume of this small area and this small area, you know, this is the mitigation. So the contours that you see here are all cuts, you know, right. taking volume out, probably gonna use that volume, you know, in the hillside here that we're, we're, we're creating uh, or some of it, you know, as much as we can, if it's good material. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna assume it's all, you know, bank run material. This is an alluvial plain from when the glaciers passed through a million years ago. So right. what's been left over here down at the bottom when this plateaus out uh, is just probably a uh, bank run gravel sand or sand. So it'll be good fill material for the embankment. At least he'll be able to get some of the volume he needs to, to create this area uh, from, from here. You know, you won't have to bring in, it's nice when you have on-site material you can use because you get the same compaction rates that you would have gotten, uh, you know, other than bringing in um, foreign materials. So, and we do that as often as we can. We're doing that on old New Hartford Road and right. with the backfill for the force main that we're putting in over there. All right, so uh, as far as parking goes, 
Um, we, we were thinking about, you know, we have the option of attacking this two, two ways, either uh, come to the commission with an amendment to the table for drive through only uh, uh, buildings that, you know, it's a restaurant with a drive through, uh, but drive through only. So we just, you can, we could change, get a change for the table or we can go to ZBA and discuss the reduction that we need in parking stalls with them. Right. what's your uh, projected occupancy for staff? Joe Naples? A maximum of five staff members at any given time, peak, peak hour, and our experience with all of our, all of our stores, and Joe has 26 of them, is that most staff don't have cars. Well. But if they all drove, there'd be a space for each of them and a space for our, uh, uh, and our yeah, right. And where's all your, where's your trash and so forth? I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves. No, that's right. It's, it's okay. Here's the receptacle right here. Here's the screened dumpster area. Mm -hmm. like, you guys, he can come around, pick up, back up, and then leave. Uh, in in two in version two below, oh that oh sorry that was version two. All right, in version one over here. Oh no, that here. Well, that's version one. Right. Sorry, this is oh it's the scaling that's making it harder. There, all right. They're both in the rear and removed from. Uh... They're both they're both in the same area. In in, ver in this version, there's two stalls back here. And, and here's where the dumpster is, and it'll remain there in both versions. Mm. That's behind the building. It is car actually, mm. the current one is right, is under there. It's right about in the same exact area uh, that Primo, where Primo had it. So they had their, theirs right here. Here's their dumpster area. It says, you could see the words dumpster area. That's the existing, and we're just moving it over to here so we can put the stalls here. <laughs> So we were so we think we're going to attack the the single curb cut thing with the DOT, and as far as parking, um, well, we could discuss that amongst ourselves. But you know, we didn't know which way the commission would feel better. I mean, maybe amending the regulations so just in case this pops up again, uh, you'll have it covered. Uh, then everybody having to go to ZBA if this happens again, where it's just a drive-through facility only. Uh, and it may happen in the future, who knows, uh, but we, we don't have it covered now and it might be good to get it covered, but I don't know how long, what the difference is in timing for, you know, I know, it, I know what it takes to go to ZBA and get the variance, um, but I don't know what the difference in timing would be to have a, a change to the regulations. Probably a little more lengthy to get it to change in the uh, regulation because you got to notify all the adjoining towns, you got 35 day uh, advance of the public hearing, you get the cog involved and so forth. But at, at least with ZBA, you're, you're, you're defining your special circumstances. And uh, yeah, I, I think I agree because, you know, in a lot of, like you said, a lot of times you don't really get a true hardship. Um, I'll let Tim speak to this too, but you know, a lot of times you don't really get a true hardship. In this case, it's pretty darn close to one as, as close as I can get to a true hardship of, of, what we what would it would take because if i if we had to add well, let's see it's it would end up being 13 stalls at 100 square feet so i have four now i'd have to add nine more you know say we just threw them in right along here around this end as we can't obviously put them anywhere in the front of the building because of the sight line distance so they would all have to go here which would push all of this stuff way back into this area even moving maybe even moving part of the retention basin right across into this whole area back here so well if there was ever a change in use for this building uh if it if it wasn't successful uh you know there'd have to be parking and be have to be adjusted if you're going to change it to some use that requires parking obviously right well, we're still going to need a special permit from the commission so I'm sure working with uh, Pam, we can craft uh, at that point a motion that protects us from that. Um, if someone tried to bring it into a full service facility again. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, any other commissioners have comments? I have one comment. Go ahead. One question. What impact does this have on the right of way that goes in back of those houses? The grading you're going to be doing here seems to be in the right of way. Is that going to restrict their usage of it? The right of way isn't currently uh, being used by anyone to get out and around over to the street, but we are leaving uh, its, its presence there if someone wanted to utilize it. Uh, one of the properties we're, we're buying actually has a, uh, you know, one of those car shelters on it that cross, you know, is in the middle of it. It's basically, uh, it's basically open, but no one's used it for that purpose. Everyone just uses it as their yards. Um, so. And if you uh, notice the volume and page on the right of way up here, volume 39, well, they, they were pretty much putting that together when horse and buggies were trying to get through there. So, you know, this, this isn't a right of way that it was ever designed for access. It's just a right of way uh, to get <coughs> behind all the buildings. So. Right. And you, if you look at the, uh, the tree line is shown on this uh, yeah. drawing <laughs> and, and a lot of the right of way is impeded by full size trees. So, and partial um, embankment at two to one yeah. over here. Well, over I know here. that there was an owner that was farther up on the right of way and he actually used it, but he's no longer alive. So, yeah. but I just know that he used it. So that's why I'm wondering is any, is it, if it's going to make it impassable for the other owners, you know, is that grading going to make it impassable? Well, certainly the, uh, the, defini the, the definition of what the right-of-way is should give some kind of a clue to how, it's, how it has to be maintained. You know, from the legal documents defining what it is and uh, that's going to restrict that. or uh, not what, what you're doing. And based on everything we can see in the title, there's... Uh, it's not been utilized and there's not much guidance, which is why we're trying to stay out of it as much as we can. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily going to improve it for anybody. I don't think we're obligated to do that, but we're trying to leave it uh, existing. So if someone was determined to try to access that way, they could get onto our site and then out utilizing our, our um, curb cut. We actually give them a, an access, area, you know, if they want to get back there, uh, you know, we, we, we've put a curb cut here for them to, to make their way there. Now, granted, you know, half of their right away is at a, already a, in this area here, it's, like it's almost greater than two to one, you know. It's like down a nine to, foot climb there in that one. Down to, down to two to one. Yeah. It, it, right now, they, the distance between here and here is only about four feet. That they that they have to access it now, uh, it, that's just naturally existing. Well, that's that's something you guys, from a legal standpoint, have to work it out. We're not yeah. correct. Uh, correct. We we'll, we'll, we would, and that's something that Tim will work on with. And um, Joe's always been open with all the neighbors, so you know um, they kind of know what's coming. So, all right. Anything else from the commission? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your input. We really appreciate it. Right, thank you very have a, much. Have, have a, a happy week. holiday. Right, yeah. Have a happy holiday. See you yeah. soon. You. <laughs> All right, back on track. Communication, Pam. I don't have any. No. Okay, how about the staff report? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. How about staff report? Uh, um, I don't have any, but to say that I had checked out the um, um, Kentucky Fried Chicken building and tried to make contact with the number there on the truck. And I haven't, you know, I, ha I, I always like to call before, you know, you send a letter. 
Um, but I, I have no new information about what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Besides the obvious selling of Christmas trees, you know, I, I, I drove in there and, um, you know, he's got some stockpiles of some um, sand and uh, stone that, you know, looks like there is some erosion into the uh, stormwater um, catch basin there. Looks like he's doing a small batching plant, uh, appears to be anyways. Uh, so you got to continue to pursue that. If you yeah, can't get over, yeah. you'll have to notify yeah. them. I, you uh, know, and okay. How about Woodruff? Uh, is that um, cleared? You know, the, no, he had asked for a, an extension. Um, and then I haven't reached out to him to, you know, there's still, there is still one car um, mm -hmm. that's in the yard. Um, but to be honest, I, I'm just, I, I'm swamped with um, activity in the office, but, you know. Um, well, well uh, along those lines, is Bob doing anything with regards to uh, you know, enforcement? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I, you know, I, I think he had uh, a couple ideas, but I, I don't think that they've quite panned out yet. Um, but yeah, we, we could use someone temporarily or even part-time but you know it's it's pretty busy the activity hasn't slowed down whatsoever well that doesn't help our situation frankly um no there's a, there's a lot of small development going on in town um you know a lot of people are making investments and it, it's just you know quite busy well when they get a deep drawdown your lake is going to be busier than heck mm -hmm. uh POCD, uh, any, anybody else have anything uh, with regards to the uh, enforcement stuff? Canavo, nothing else with him? Joe, Canavo? Yeah. No. Oh, it's old history, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, right. No. Okay. I don't think he ever got served. I, you know, uh, I don't think, it, you know, like I said, when things go out by certified mail, you know, he rejects, years. he doesn't accept it. Yeah. A lot of people don't, but the post office, God bless them. will keep trying for, you know, three, three, four months. So you're, you know, you're left waiting for them to sign for it and then it comes back to you. So it's really not a, a very quick way of uh, serving someone. Well, unfortunately, and his did come back. It did come back to you. Like, you know, it did come back. So he hasn't been, although, you know, it's sent both certified and regular mail and only the certified mail comes back. Mm -hmm. But like I hold back on the regular mail so that, you know, because if they open that, then they know what the certified mail is. But no, that hasn't come back. Right. I, I mean, it hasn't. I don't think he's, mm -hmm. the regular mail has not come back. And he hasn't done anything. Um, but he has to sign. No, no, no. Watch out. Okay. Um, on the POCD, uh, it keeps getting a little dragged out, but we're, uh, we did get a response from uh, the EDC, which I thought was uh, good. And I'll scan it in and get it to everybody. Uh, we haven't heard anything from Steve Williams. Have you uh, had an opportunity? Maybe you can nudge him a little bit. Yeah, no, he's know. working on it. He, he, it's definitely on his mind. How about uh, Mr. Velowski? No. Nothing? No. Is he, is, I know he's only part time. Is he? Right. Right. So we're going to not get anything. And then we'll hear from Mr. Mark Mellinson uh, when he comes back that we didn't, we ignored him like the last time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how about the uh, anything? For acrimony the there, George? Well, I, I think it was a little ridiculous, but anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm only. <laughs> Fire department. Him, nothing. All time. You know, have, oh, too many fires, too many permits. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we said something to you too. That's right. <laughs> In the downtown department, uh, I talked to uh, Bill Fitzgerald. He's going to work something out because that is something that we've talked about before. Uh, and I asked him to spend a little time with that. I've talked to Melanie. I've met with her. She's going to provide us something. Uh, wetlands, uh, I guess the chairman is uh, 
on some kind of leave. So uh, we'll get those assembled. Pam, I think the last time we talked about it, Pam had, we got one price from somebody when we do our mapping and Pam checked another. And uh, so we've determined who was the low quota on that. So when that, that'll fall into place. But I think you'll be interested to see the EDC was very thorough in their review that the things that were of interest to them. I thought that was very good. They took the time. Uh, Craig, you, you told me something verbally. If you could put something in writing on the areas that you. <clears throat> yep. There wasn't very much on that last section, George, but I'll be yeah. more than happy to do that. And then, and then we'll, where the looks of things, I don't know how soon we're going to be meeting in person, but uh, maybe what we could do is uh, maybe the first meeting in January is to kind of come up with a, a game plan on a schedule. I thought I'd have a chance to draft something out for everybody to look at and, and give feedback on. So we'll, let me target that if you can think about it. Uh, and uh, so the next thing we've got, unless anybody else has another comment on the POCD, we've got election of officers. We've got three officers that we need to elect tonight. I'll make a motion to reappoint the, the present three officers for another year. There's a, is there a second on that? My, my only shortcoming of that, my health issues, I, I don't want you guys to think that I'm not uh, pulling my weight. That, that's, that's my concern. So with that in mind, I'll, I'll serve, but I just, uh, you know, I've got a lot of issues. So, well, I think your <clears throat> your longevity on, on this commission and the uh, wetlands has brought an awful lot of value to uh, to the decision making. So, I, I would hope you'd stay on as. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying I don't. I just don't want some. I don't want an opportunity of someone else to uh, evolve into the position to, you know. Uh, that's, I, I just, that's all. I mean, I'm not, I just, as you well know, I get a call. I got to be in Yukon for some test or something and I get home at seven o'clock. So, okay. I'm, I'm not that's making understandable, Greg. Pardon? That's understandable. Well, I just don't want you guys to think that I'm, you know, being a shirker. That's all. That could be any one of us. So, yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But no, I, I've enjoyed the 15 or 20 years that I've worked on, on land use boards. I, you know, it's been part of my life. So mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that aspect of it. It just, whatever. Okay. Well, with that being said, I'll, you know, I'll shut my mouth. So, so just so that I have this right for the record, Peter, you made a motion to uh, nominate the current slate, the current slate being George as chairman, uh, Craig as vice president. Chairman and our as secretary, um, but I didn't get a second from anyone. I'll That's second. correct. Who made the Craig seconded? Somebody just second. I'll second it. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to vote myself. Huh? Craig did. Yeah. Why you thought, a lot I, more I thought income. Joe. Thank you. I thought Joe Biden was going to be chairman. <laughs> oh, gee, let's <laughs> not go <get over> there. <laughs> <laughs> Pay raise. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we've got a nomination on the floor and uh, just, just to uh, make sure, are there any other uh, thoughts for any other slate or individuals and so forth that we, before we move forward? Okay. If we hearing none, uh, all in favor of the motion. All right. Took care of that business. Sir, you voted. <laughs> For right, you know, your video is off, so we can't see. You. Why, why would that? What do I? I, I? I don't know, and I, I wish I could prompt you, but I can't. But you're, are you, you're in favor of that motion? Oh, yes, I am. Yep, favorite. yeah, I guess it okay, looks like yes. I fell okay, asleep in the you. video. My hand didn't go in, but I did <laughs> also, Pam. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, short term rentals we haven't talked about, it's been postponed over and over again for probably seven months. And I, I guess everybody's seeing what's going on with Airbnb. They just the, the public offering and so forth. It's unbelievable. But it looks like uh, with all this, uh, with the virus and so forth, they've really instituted a lot more control uh, procedures 
in their rentals. So, but, but it's something we should be uh, keeping track of. And uh, when we finally find that there's a need for it, we can uh, resurface that. Uh, Jerry, have you seen, Jerry, you were tracking that Airbnb stuff, weren't you? Yeah, I was a while back, like three years ago when we first uh, launched it. Is that long? Holy yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Christ. Not uh, that I'm counting. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So if there's nothing else, we need a motion to adjourn. I so move. Okay. We have a second. 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 Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. All in favor. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for all your work. And, uh, stay healthy. Stay healthy. Thank you. Good luck. He looks nice. You all have good holidays. Yeah, it's another meeting. Where are you going? Oh, that's right, too. <laughs> this is early December. Uh.